Today we're talking about estate planning. And now I'm going to talk about what happens if you die without a will. Did you know that over one half of the United States population dies without a will? If so, a court decides what happens to your assets. Who gets to care for your minor children? And how your debts and taxes must be paid. If you die without a will, the person appointed must post a bond or security, which is an expensive proposition. A will allows you to appoint your own executor of your estate to collect and manage and distribute the assets in the way in which you desire. A will allows you to appoint guardians for your minor children and successors in the event that someone's not available to serve to care for your kids. And it allows you to apportion your estate to whomever you wish. A will allows you to decide what debts to pay out of what assets and it allows you to waive the bond requirement so that an executor or an administrator does not have to post a bond and pay for insurance to serve in that role. Some of you own your property jointly with rights of survivorship with a spouse or another loved one, but that may not be enough and a will may be more important to accomplish your objectives. Owning property jointly is a game of survivorship what that means is that the last person alive owns all the property after you're gone. So your will does not control what happens with jointly owned property, even if you say so in your will. Now the benefit of owning property jointly is that it's not subject to probate, meaning that it bypasses the court system automatically. But it also creates unintended heirs. Joint ownership also does not totally avoid the probate system. What that means is, upon the death of the survivor, property will still have to go through the court system, subject to potential probate costs, fees, and taxes. When you title property in joint name, such as real estate, you've created a gift, which means that you may have to file a gift tax return and potentially pay gift taxes on the creation of the joint tenancy. Another way to plan your estate is to designate a beneficiary. But designating a beneficiary may not accomplish all of your estate planning goals. You're naming a person that you want to receive money that's in a particular account on your death. Or you may designate a beneficiary of your 401k or retirement plans or other deferred compensation plans. If you have life insurance, you typically will want to designate a beneficiary and you can own accounts in most banks and credit unions in POD, payable on death accounts, or TOD. This allows the assets in those accounts to transfer on your death without being subject to probate. You may have an IRA, an individual retirement account that you want to designate a beneficiary for. But designating a beneficiary does not necessarily protect your spouse in the way that you may want to. And it doesn't necessarily protect or care for your minor or adult children. It could create unintended beneficiaries, just as with joint ownership with rights of survivorship. You have no control over the assets that you've left to a beneficiary following your death. So you're going to need a will to avoid the unintended consequences of not having one. 